the Sabbath day and weren't cooking dinner on the Sabbath day or putting a fire to heat the house on the Sabbath day, if they weren't working on the Sabbath day, then they know they weren't being a good Catholic and they would persecute them. Sometimes we call nations Christian when they show no signs, no works of repentance, no works, no behavior. We just use that term. America is a Christian nation. Well, why do we allow people in a Christian nation to live in a cardboard box? Why do we let somebody at the top of a corporation get a million dollar bonus, $10 million bonus, after laying off the people at the bottom of the company to make more profit for the greedy stockholders in that company? Why do you allow our universities to teach our young, impressionable college students that the purpose of an employee in a corporation, their fiduciary, their legal responsibility is to maximize the profits of the shareholders, to satisfy the greed of the shareholders, and call ourselves a Christian nation? Why? My, my brother and I, we were talking, and he was mentioning how there were lynchings in America's past, and in some of those lynchings, it was announced over the pulpit of a church that the next day there was going to be a lynching. Mm -hmm. And then those church members, those Baptists, those Methodists, those Presbyterians, those Catholics, whatever religion that church was, they showed up to be entertained by watching somebody lynch. And nobody in there said, I'm, I'm leaving this church. I'm going to sit under you as a pastor because this is ungodly. There's a new movie coming out. I'm not encouraging anybody to go see the movie, but I saw a little trailer where it's about Nat Turner. Turner and, and the character playing it says, for every scripture in the Bible that justifies slavery, he found at least one condemning slavery. You know, as Christians, shouldn't we know what those scriptures are? When somebody tries to tell us that we shouldn't be Christians and we defend the faith mm -hmm. <clears throat> of or relating to Christians, many Christian deaths in the crusades, exhibiting a spirit proper to a follower of Jesus Christ, Christ like. She displayed true Christian charity, decent, respectable. They gave him a good Christian burial, a good, respectable burial. Exhibiting a spirit proper to the follower of Jesus Christ. To move from believer to Christian, it takes action. It takes a change in behavior, a change in attitude. It is easy to change behavior, harder to change attitude. If you change the attitude first, then the behavior follows. Once we get to the point where we are so full of God's love, then we find that that love just comes out of us. It just flows from us, and people perceive it. So there's a difference between a believer and somebody who calls themselves a Christian. A person who believes in Christ and adherent, adherent of Christianity, a person who exemplifies on his or her life the teachings of Christ, he died like a true Christian. Informal, a person who possesses Christian virtues, especially practical ones practical ones, everyday Christian virtues. That every single day through your practical life, on your job, in your neighborhood, in your family relationships, in your friendships, everything is practical. You exemplify what a Christian is about. The adjective of relating to or derived from Jesus Christ, his teachings, example, or his followers. Uh, sometimes not capital, exhibiting kindness or goodness. A Christian exhibits kindness or goodness. Every relationship they have, they try to be kind to people. They 
they try to be kind to people who are not kind to them. As I've said, it's dangerous when you do that because if you show kindness to people who are not kind to you, then that releases the power of God into their life and punishes them, and God will whip them to the point where you feel sorry for them. That's my personal testimony. That's my personal experience. A follower or a disciple of Jesus, someone who believes Jesus is the Christ or Messiah. The New Testament mentions that the followers of Jesus were first called Christians within a few years after his death. Now, right here you see that interchange between the term disciple and Christian. We're making sort of a transition going from Christian to disciple to get a better understanding. Disciple in the Bible is a scholar, sometimes applied to the followers of John the Baptist in Matthew uh, verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 14, and of the Pharisees, uh, chapter 22, verse 16. But principally, the followers of Christ, a disciple of Christ, is one who, um, let's see, I don't know if that's on the next slide, or if I just look that out. Let me back up a little bit. The disciples of the Pharisees. Paul was a disciple of the Pharisees. He was a Pharisee. He was a student of God's word. He sat at the feet of Gamaliel, one of the greatest teachers of the law. He paid close attention. He retained what he was taught. He studied on his own. He tried to master what he was being taught. He tried to exercise, and his life was guided by his belief in the law. He was zealous about his belief in the law. When somebody started talking about a New Testament without him being able to understand it, he wanted to persecute those. He wanted to bind them up. He wanted to put them in jail. Later on, he winds up bound up and put in jail himself for the same reason that he had arrested others. There's an irony there. To be a disciple, you have to be a scholar. To be a disciple, you are going to be in attendance in Sunday school and in Bible class, and then you're going to do your homework to be a good disciple because without doing that homework, without the extra study, you will not be the kind of disciple that you should be. A disciple also studies on their own. We have to have a balance between um, formal study in Bible class and informal reading the Bible on our own. Mm -hmm. By you just picking a scripture sometimes or a book and deciding I'm going to read through it, you will discover some things that you may not have gotten in Bible class because the bishop, the pastor, the, the evangelist, whoever is teaching or preaching at that time didn't feel led to go into that direction. Sometimes you will get more of the rhema word that deals with your specific situation in your own personal study. But we have to, we can't just have the personal study at home. Paul himself, and I meant to include one of those scriptures, but Paul himself after being a scholar of the law, after being converted, goes into the desert, and he there communes with God for three years. And he meditates on the Old Testament scriptures that he had been taught and that he remembered. And God gave him an understanding and one of the first things he did when he came out of the wilderness is go to Jerusalem and sit down with Peter and James, James the brother of Jesus, Peter, the, one of the leading disciples, apostles, and 
have a conversation with them and compare what God gave him out in the desert with what God had given the other apostles. He wanted to be in order. He wanted to make sure that he didn't get some private interpretation of the scriptures. And what they did very often, you see this in the book of Acts and some other books, when they had a disagreement, they argued with each other. It's okay to argue with each other a little bit, but the purpose of that argument is to come together in what we believe, is to be reasonable, mm -hmm. to reason with each other. Sometimes people disagree and they want to fall apart or separate. Instead of staying together like the apostles, the example that they gave us, they keep studying and studying and studying until they come into an agreement. Now, religion. One of the 12 personal followers of Christ. That's what one definition of a disciple. One of the 12 personal followers of Christ. Jesus walked down the road, the 12 walked with him. Probably a couple of them trying to walk side by side, by side to get close to him to be you know, identified with him. See, see, I'm getting close to Jesus. I'm getting close to Jesus. John, time to take a nap. He's just acting like us. He, he understood Jesus. He understood better than, than the others that Jesus is God. Look at his writings in St. John. He said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He understood. This is God. And he is my Father. And you see it sometimes. A good father, his son, wants to cuddle up with him sometimes. Might fall asleep on his shoulder. I mean, Keith is old now. Don't tell him to say that, but he's a little younger than me, but he's old now. But there was a point where he had that relationship and was manifest physically. He wanted to be close to the Father. One of the reasons we have a problem with men in the church is not enough of them had a father and they look in the Bible and say, our father, and they get confused. They don't know what it's talking about. I look at it and I'm thinking about that old man that just sitting in a chair and can barely communicate. But I remember when me, me and my brother, we both weigh over 500 pounds, you know, together. But there was a time when we were little, and Daddy would come home from work, and we'd both run to the living room. Daddy, Daddy. And he'd pick us both up and carry us back into the kitchen to eat. That's the father. When I want to relate to the man in the Bible, that's what I want to relate to. But some don't have that. One of the 70 followers sent by forth by Christ in Luke chapter 10, verse 1. He sent out 35 teams of two. I don't know if one was called the uh, lead and the other was the armor bearer. I don't think they called them. They, they, they just partners. Yeah. Not in the new covenant. Not in the new covenant. Not in the new covenant, but we... we there was a pastor gave me a book, uh, How to Be an Armor Bearer. I got the book, I just haven't read it. I haven't thrown it out yet, but I, I, I probably will never read it. Make it clear for the pastor, not me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't want to name him, but yeah, it wasn't you. 